The well-known British scientist Thomas Malthus argued in the beginning of the 19th century that the world population could not continue to grow due to a shortage of land. In his time, the world population consisted of about one billion people. Two centuries later, however, the census totaled seven billion, and it is predicted that the world will be inhabited by nine billion people in 2050. Malthus did not sufficiently take into account the innovative power of farmers and growers. They were innovative in the past and will need to be even more so in the future. Not only is the number of people on Earth growing, but so is their welfare standard. To match these changes, agricultural production will need to increase by 70%. Moreover, there is less and less agricultural land available per citizen. In the 1950s, this totaled 5,200 square meters per person, while in 2000, the number was less than half at 2,500 square meters. In 2050, it will be further reduced to 1,600 square meters per person. Likewise, there is increasingly less water available per head of the population, and domestic use is still rising. Furthermore, in the upcoming decade, the global demand for energy will increase by more than two-thirds, while it will become increasingly difficult to exploit fossil fuels. The world is in urgent need of innovative solutions that require less space, water and energy to meet the growing needs of 9 billion people in 2050. This is the Netherlands. Although globally the number 134 in size and number 59 in terms of population, it is the second largest exporter of agricultural and horticultural products. How can that be? This is due to the unique combination of production, marketing, trade, logistics, related services and know-how. No other region in the world is characterized by such a geographic concentration of all of these components, and nowhere are they traditionally intertwined to such an extent. The result is something to be proud of. In the Netherlands, the cultivation area has decreased by 20% since 1950 while the productivity of farmers and growers has multiplied by a factor of five. But the Dutch are not only productive, they are also thrifty. For example, Dutch greenhouse growers use approximately 60% less water since 2000. In the cultivation of tomatoes, they went from using 22 litres of water per kilogram of tomatoes to only four. By comparison, Spain uses between 27 and 40 litres of water, and Israel 60. The testing ground for these modern developments is the municipality of Westland, known worldwide as the City of Glass. Here you will find the largest interconnected international greenhouse cluster in the world, containing 4,300 hectares of greenhouses. All global players in this sector are located here. It is situated in Greenport, Holland, and inextricably linked to the know-how cities of Delft and Leiden, the port city of Rotterdam, and the government centers in The Hague. Historically progressive, Westland is also more and more innovative with regard to energy. Thus, the primary fuel usage per square meter by horticultural companies has dropped in the past 20 years by 36%. More often, growers in Westland employ a vast amount of geothermal energy to heat their greenhouses. And a surplus of heat in the summer is not wasted, but stored underground for future use in the winter, either to be benefited from in greenhouses or to heat the homes of the nearby population. But Westland is even more ambitious. Together with surrounding municipalities, it has initiated the implementation of a sizable so-called circle of heat to make use of geothermal energy from dozens of geothermal sources. In addition, industrial waste heat from the Rotterdam region will be used to provide sustainable heating for the greenhouse cluster and urban agglomeration. As a result, sustainability and entrepreneurship in Westland are combined, and the burden on nature is significantly reduced by making use of innovative solutions. Westland, where nature meets innovation.